This is in a matter of State versus Khalil Willow Weaver, indictment number 17-2-547. As to count one, charging the defendant with the murder of Robin West, what is your verdict? Guilty. Three women murdered. A fourth woman attacked and nearly killed. The spree of violence lasted just 84 days in the summer and fall of 2016. Charging the defendant with the murder of Sarah Butler, what is your verdict? Guilty. He created a digital trail that led police right to his bedroom, leading to his conviction as a serial killer. I'm Christopher Mogg with NorthJersey.com and the USA Today Network. Khalil Wheeler Weaver was just 20 years old when he was arrested in December 2016. Three years later, he was convicted of 11 felonies, including three counts of murder. All his attacks happened in the area behind me, within view of the Empire State Building. Cell phone data played a major role in this case. Google searches, text messages, and cell tower pings provided police with a history of Wheeler Weaver's actions and his locations. Tiffany Taylor was the woman who got away. She was 34 when she met Wheeler Weaver, she was pregnant, and she was homeless. They met at a motel in Elizabeth, New Jersey, an industrial city known for its famous oil refinery. Her street savvy, her will to survive, and her gripping testimony about the attack sealed Wheeler Weaver's conviction. That's why I tried so hard, because I kept thinking to myself, I knew I, was, I had to get away. I wasn't planning on dying that day. My every thought was to get away. My every thought, or kill both of us, but it wasn't him getting away, no. He was a friend of my best friend, and she introduced me to him. I didn't know who it was. I, knew, I just knew that it was a guy out there that knew everything about me, that had a crush on me, that would call me every two to three days. And he was trying to get me to trust him to meet up. We were staying at the Ritz and other hotels too, but that night my friend had got a room actually at the Ritz, and I was over there hanging out with him. My friend wanted me to go, go grab something for him and bring it back. I have a car. I was getting calls all day from this guy. He asks me to, to meet him, kind of like on a highway to pick him up right there. So I'm like, okay. I go to pick him up. He had on a ski mask and gloves. He kept saying that he was cold. I guess that was his excuse for having a ski mask and gloves on, to not make it look not normal drove out, he said he had to use the bathroom to pull over. So I made a right down one of those other blocks and pulled over. That was the last thing I remember. Then I woke up, I woke up in the back seat and I was being choked out and raped from behind. That's how I woke up. And then he strangled me more when I woke up and I passed out. And this happened repeatedly about three times. And then um, that's when he, he took the handcuffs and put the handcuffs on me and started to duct tape me. He kept trying to make me believe that he was, if I just listened to everything he'd say, that he would let me go. But he revealed himself to me like, I knew that he was going to kill me now. So my every thought was plan A, plan B, plan C, and so on to get away. And I was pregnant. After a while, the duct tape from me crying and sweating from being scared started lifting, lifting up, like right here around my mouth, because he had it kind of wrapped, like all around like this, up to my nose. And um, once it started lifting up and I was able to talk, a little so he could understand me. Essex County Assistant Prosecutor Adam Wells 
led the criminal case against Wheeler Weaver. Still enough. Here we've got S58. These are no joke real handcuffs. These are the handcuffs that were on Miss Taylor's arm when the police arrived. I broke out of one handcuff because of the way my, I'm kind of double jointed and flexible, so I was able to slip out of one while we were driving. But um, I told him that if he lets me go back to the room, I could retrieve my phone that I had left. And the phone had like all of our text message and messages and things going back and forth on it, so he really wanted that phone back. So, and I added on that I would like have the guy that was in the room, I told him it was a really old guy in the room that was waiting, that, his, that was his car we was in. I told him I could convince him to give him some money if he let me go or let us go. And he agreed to it. As she come out, the defendant leaves in, lifts her up, and she's facing towards the car. Again, corroborating the handcuffs. You can also see here and there that the sleeves of her jacket are flopping because they've been placed over to conceal the handcuffs. Uh, he thought that we were, I was going to go back. He would take the duct tape off of me. I would go upstairs go into the room, grab the phone really quick, and then come out with the old man. I took the handcuff off, and I was just telling, you know, the guy that was in the room with me what happened. And he was still banging on the door, so I went to the window and I opened the blind, and I showed him that I was out of one cuff. And then that's when he ran off and my friend called the police. I'm thinking of a way to get away <laughs> at that point because obviously he had some plans for me. If he need handcuffs and duct tape and he had already raped me and he still didn't let me go. So that meant that that was just the beginning. They didn't believe me, Elizabeth, New Jersey Police Department. They thought I was lying. What injuries do you what what, what injuries do you have? Look at my face and the duct tape. For the what? For the duct tape, my face. When did he duct tape you? Huh? In the car? In the car. So you let him duct tape you or what happened? I just need to know. He put the handcuffs on me first. He choked me out and after he choked me the one hand. What was the, all happened all happened in the car? Yeah. Where were you parked at this time? Um The gas station over there? No, it was by the gas station though. By the gas station? Block. It was in this car. So he took the duct tape with him? Had to, yeah. And he just ran away? Ran away. I felt horrible and scared because I knew he was still on the run and they didn't believe me. So no one was going to look for him and he was just going to look for me. Definitely now to kill me because of what I knew. Three young women violently murdered in 2016. The killer talked to police from two different cities, but fooled them each time. Find out how the sister and friends of his final victim stepped up and brought him down in To Catfish a Killer, part two of our special report on New Jersey serial killer Khalil Wheeler Weaver. But it wasn't him getting away, no.